Welcome to the 2020 On-Farm Network results series. I'm Megan Burns, agronomist for the On-Farm Network program. This presentation covers results of our dry bean tillage trial. So it's a bit hard to tell um, since there wasn't a lot of canola stubble left standing in the spring, but the right side of the image here shows the strip tillage. So you can kind of see the strips and then the left side of the image shows conventional tillage. So although it might not look like you imagine strip till to look in your mind, there are some interesting observations that came out of this trial. So this trial was designed to compare the two tillage systems with the main focus on yield. So we wanted to verify that strip tillage could be used for this producer's dry bean production um, without harming yield at the end of the season. So we just had a single dry bean tillage trial this year in South Central Manitoba. It was in Pinto beans. Um, you can see a, an NDVI image here of the trial. Um, the layout was a little bit different from the start. So just because of equipment widths um, and how many different pieces of equipment were involved and had to kind of line up uh, to fit within our, our plots or strips, we ended up having to stack replicates in this trial. So normally we would have six replicates or 12 strips um, across the field. And in this case, we just had to stack them one on top of the other. So that's why it looks a little different there. So like I said, we went into this thinking it would be about yield, right? Verifying the effect of strip till, making sure that it was an okay practice, wasn't gonna harm production in any sense. And then it got really windy. So what we actually saw was the effect of sandblasting in conventional tillage versus strip tillage. And the effects were pretty interesting. So in June, there were some really big winds that went through and it led to pretty severe sandblasting in the conventional tilled portions of the trial. So you can see this image was captured after the winds went through, after the sandblasting event, and there's very severe damage to the bean seedlings in these conventional tilled areas compared to what they looked like in the strip tilled areas of the field. So still some damage, they're not looking too perfect, but um, certainly a lot less affected by the sandblasting event than the conventional tilled areas. And a big portion of the conventional tilled area of the field actually had to be reseeded as a result of this sandblasting. So due to the sandblasting and the need to reseed a portion of the trial, um, we had to shorten up our, our tillage comparison um, to stick to areas that didn't have to be reseeded so that we were comparing apples to apples in terms of harvest date. Um, so we were only able to salvage a small portion of the trial, which means I lost some of my statistical power in our ability to tell, you know, whether or not there was a significant yield difference. So using the data that we were able to um, salvage after the sandblasting, there wasn't a significant difference in yield, but I'm interested to verify that with more driving tillage trials in the future, um, just to make sure that that holds out when we have kind of a proper comparison with full replication as we like to see. So there wasn't a significant yield difference in this trial, but I think the most important economic consideration is really the effect of that sandblasting, right? The effect of those early spring winds. If you have to reseed, that's a really costly operation up front at the time of reseeding with the cost of your seed and the cost of the seeding operation itself. But then it also probably bites you a little bit at the end of the season um, because you're pushing your production later in the growing season than you normally would. And you're probably losing some yield potential as a result. So the need to reseed can be really costly. And I think it's really interesting that we were able to see so clearly the benefit of reduced tillage um, when it comes to something like a sandblasting event. So what's next for dry bean tillage trials? Um, we do have two more lined up for next growing season already. So they will be comparing strip till and some form of conventional tillage again in um, dry beans. So both trials are in wheat stubble. So it will look a little bit more like you might expect uh, strip tillage to look. There'll be more residue left standing in the spring. So we're interested to again observe um, the, any effect of sandblasting that there might be, obviously depending on spring weather conditions and how windy it is, but also like I mentioned, just verifying whether or not there's an effect on yield um, between the, the tillage systems. So a big thank you to all of our on-farm network participants. If you are interested in learning more, getting involved, or if you have a trial idea, please feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you.